Hi, my name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a certified SOLIDWORKS expert here at Javelin Technologies. And in this series of tech tip videos, we're going to take a look at tips and tricks for consumer product design. My background is industrial design, and I specialize in really high quality surfacing for consumer products. We really need to nail the surfacing on some of these models just so that way the, our end result, our product, is very highly polished and has a really, really high quality look to it. And one of the most important things to understand when working with consumer products and surfacing is the continuity or the transitions and the quality of those transitions between surfaces. So here I've uh, drawn a very series of splines and we're going to take a look at C0, C1, C2, C3 and C4 continuity. Various types of transitions all with various levels of quality to them. In SOLIDWORKS we're most concerned with C0, C1 and C2. So let's zoom in here and take a look at C0. So C0 indicates positional continuity. In positional continuity, the endpoints of these two splines I've drawn are equal. However, there's going to be a distinct hard edge we see here. And what I've turned on here are the curvature combs indicate the rate of change of the curvature of the splines. This can be done by right-clicking on the spline and selecting Show Curvature Combs. If I zoom in where the two splines intersect, we see that the curvature combs do not touch. This indicates C0 positional continuity and we have a distinct hard edge where these two splines meet. There is no continuity between them. The next case of continuity we'll look at is C1 continuity. In C1 continuity we have two splines that touch each other and the direction of the splines at the intersection point is the same. This is referred to as the tangent relation we may have seen in SOLIDWORKS. Every time we add a tangent based radius, a normal fillet using the radius command, we will see a distinct kind of line here where the reflections will not be ideal. And this is explained by the curvature comb. We can see that while the combs touch indicating the direction of the two splines is equal, the rate of change, the radius, is not. And we'll pick this up as a distinct line in our highlight. We're really concerned about the quality of these surfaces as when the light plays over the various surfaces we have in the model, we have to have very smooth transitions to maintain really high quality highlights, which is a distinct uh, factor in high, high quality consumer product surfacing. So the next example I have here is C2 continuity. And C2 is what we're going to strive for in our surfacing in SOLIDWORKS. So with the two splines, if I zoom in here, we can see that not only do the combs touch each other, but the radiuses are equal to each other. So this is going to be a very much higher quality reflection and surface than the C1 continuity we looked at before. C3 is can be achieved sometimes in SOLIDWORKS and I've had to actually manually tweak these combs but with C3 curvature we can see that not only are the curvature combs touching the radius is are equal but the rate of change of the radius this line here is almost identical if we can maintain this level of quality in our surfaces we're going to do a very good service to the products we're designing the last case is C4, and in C SOLIDWORKS there's a next to no way to get to C4, but it's an interesting example of keeping the control points on a spline to a minimum. Here I simply have one spline with two spline handles and no control points in between, whereas here I have two splines with separate handles that I've had to manipulate, and you can see the quality of just having one spline with two control handles and no control points. We have a very, very high quality spline. So wherever we're creating our splines in SOLIDWORKS, always strive for this level of quality. Thanks.